Hey, RGB945, and um, have you seen my Pikachu hat? So, ever since um, <laughs> ever since I made fun of myself in that one video, uh, I can't seem to find it. I feel like I did something intentionally, but I just I don't know for sure. Maybe at some point when I do find it, I'll I'll maybe announce it on one of my social medias or uh, maybe even on YouTube. Maybe make a YouTube video of me finding it. But you know what? Let's not worry and focus about that right now. But what are we focused about today? Speed tears. And um, what's so great about speed tiers, man, if you don't know about speed tiers, how are you going to get to Master Ball, right? But yeah, let's go ahead and get started after this intro. Speed tiers, right? So before we continue, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like. All of that is appreciated. Doesn't cost you anything except a couple of clicks, right? So moving on, moving on. All right, so what are speed tiers, right? A speed tier is a benchmark um, of speed and the, with the current Pokemon in the meta, right? Basically, what that means is we create a list and we categorize Pokemon based off their speed um, accordingly. So, like, if you're in the 90s, like, maybe you're base 90, base 80, base 60, base 100 speed. What does base mean? Base means that those are, that's the lowest stats that you can have as in a Pokemon. So, who are we talking about? So, we're talking about the top 24, top 25, right? Uh, Pokemon in the Pokelytics, because that's basically what you're going to see in the meta. So, we're going to talk about the 60s, uh, the 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, and 200s. But what's, what's the goal here, right? So, you want to outspeed everything in your class. The speed of your Pokemon... What you want to do with them is max speed in the in the in the EVs. So like the candies, right? The carbs, the carbos. Um, you want to go ahead and max speed them, and then max attack or max special attack, right? You're probably gonna focus sash, or you're probably gonna choice scarf them, so that they can either uh, survive a hit, right? Maybe and maybe get two turns, or you give them a choice scarf so they can go first. Usually, in most cases, the slower the Pokemon. Uh, the bulkier they are, right? So that that means they can they can survive a hit, and then they can also land a hit. Um, sometimes they're there to be annoying. Sometimes they're there to be supportive. Whatever the case may be, usually slower Pokemon have other priority moves that make them good. All right, so speed natures, right? They change a Pokemon stats. So, like for instance, here we're, because we're focusing on speed, we're only going to focus on speed natures. So timid, right? Uh, if your Pokemon were to be a timid nature. Uh, it increases their speed, but lowers their attack. Now, there's other instances where, like, maybe you don't care about your defense or you don't care about your special defense, right? Um, most of the time, if you're a special attacker, you want to decrease your attack for something else. Or maybe you want to do a jolly uh, nature where you lose your special attack. Well, you lose 15 points in special attack, but then you gain it in speed, right? And it's probably because you're, you're a physical attacker. Like, maybe you're Urshifu or... Um, I don't know, um, a Metagross, right? And you, you need to attack and you need to have the most attack uh, possible, right? So that, that's the reasons why you would do that. Then there's other things like brave, relaxed, quiet, and sassy. Now, why would you ever want to lower your speed um, opposed to increasing it, right? Well, there's, there's a thing called Trick Room. So the slower Pokemon get to attack first all the way to the, the speediest, right? And the field. It, incre it basically increases your chances of going first in Trick Room. So I think about it. If you have a Torkoal with, um, and it's born with terrible IVs, right, in speed, like they're no good, um, that you, you just increase your chances. Um, you have a speed lowering nature, you just increase your chances, and then you, you know, you, you don't put any investment in speed, right? All of that means that you're probably going to go first in Trick Room. Like, unless your opponent did the exact same thing you did, you, you're not going into a, a speed roll or a speed tie, right? And speed ties, like I said, you flip the, the game flips a coin for you, and whoever wins the coin toss um, gets to go first. So let's start with the 60s, right? So this is, again, this is based off the Pokalytics website, which I'll put in the description below, that these are the top 25 as of today. So, what do we got? We have an Incineroar, we have a Grimmsnarl, we have a Lapras, and we have a Porygon 2. You know what? I like, I actually like the fact that they, they, they added this. So, here's, here's why. Incineroar and Grimmsnarl. If you, if you ever played a rank, or, or watch anybody play a rank, um, you'll notice that Grimmsnarl and Incineroar, they're not the fastest Pokemon, right? They're not the fastest Pokemon, and they're not meant to be. Like, Incineroar... Uh, honestly, he doesn't really benefit from the attack that he has. Like, yes, uh, you can see he has 115 attack, which is which is really good. Which is really good. But he has things like Fake Out. He has Parting Shot. He has Snarl. He has so many moves that can do other things besides attack. And normally, that's what you'll see. He also has Intimidate, right? 
So he'll go out there and intimidate, then he can parting shot, meaning that he could he'll probably take the hit for the Pokemon coming in, right? Because he's his base speed is 60, so he's probably gonna go either dead last or third to last. Um, he'll be able to take a hit, parting shot, lower someone's stats, and then switch in another Pokemon for uh, for the next turn, right? So he, it's a setter. He, he's essentially a setter. Like he he can attack. I'm not saying don't use Incineroar for attacking. Uh, all I'm telling you is that um, that's probably not what you're going to see him for. So, and that's probably the reason why. Grimmsnarl, almost the same case. You'll see a Grimmsnarl every once in a while with a Sucker Punch, with a um, with a Spirit Break, you know, things like that. Uh, but you're, they're not there to do that primarily. Either Thunder Wave or Light Screen or, you know, and make sure that the Pokemon next to them gets to, you know, easier succeed in, in getting a couple KOs. They're there to take hits and be annoying and uh be basically set up for either your uh, the late game or the pokemon right next to them lapras and Por porygon however lapras and porygon too so what do they do so lapras actually for the most part if you see a lapras they're probably going to uh gigantamax and the reason for that is because it, it sets up screens if you can set up screens you get light screen and reflect immediately right off the back and that's really good so you get damage because of the hey um what is it the g max renaissance so it's an ice move right you get damage you get screens for five turns um you don't get the hail um unfortunately but yeah and because it's a ba base speed or i'm sorry base hp 130 imagine if you do no investments and you double that that's a that, that means this lapras is at 260. now imagine if you put full bulk meaning you increase the defenses the special defense and hp this thing is unkillable when it's dynamax right like it, it'll, it'll take a couple hits it'll take a couple hits before it goes down but yeah th this isn't meant the, the lapras isn't meant to outspeed anything but for the most part lapras is just there to create screens and be a bulky pokemon in the way right it'll do damage but it's not going to do outstanding damage like somebody like cinderace or you know something else right um porygon 2 also also good addition now he doesn't have a g max form or a g max move or anything special and as far as like dynamax goes but look at the bulk this guy has 90 defense 95 special defense and because it, it can evolve one more stage you can give it an evolite and now with no investments right no investments in anything just with the current stats that 90 gets gets uh gets added to half more and then 95 also have more so now you have a porygon 2 just because you gave it one item and now it has 130 defense and 100 and like what 30 almost 40 special defense it's insane now you go ahead and bulk this up at max hp max special attack dynamax it double the hp this thing this thing becomes a beast right so this thing this thing is it's also a trick room setter uh because of, because of the lower speed you're probably you're probably going to see this in trick room it's probably going to be annoying because it, it knows things like eerie impulse recover you know things like that um but yeah for the most part porygon 2 is there to maybe do some damage but also be annoying it also gets ally switch oh i forgot uh let's move along to the next one all right so in the current meta there's only one pokemon in the 70s tier and that's metagross um I see Metagross, uh, a lot of them, and, um, and not as much as before when the uh, Crown of Tundra first hit, but uh, yeah, I still see them here and there, but yeah, the speed is 70. Uh, it's kind of mediocre, but look at it, look at its defenses. It's, the defense is 130, special defense is 90. Sometimes you'll see this with a, um, with a uh, what is it, an Assault Vest to increase this to 135 uh, for the special defense, but for the most part, it prob it's probably weakness policy or life orb. And, the reason you would want a weakness policy is because HP is at 80. So let's say a full investment, it's maybe 160, right? Let's just, just hypothetical. It's 160. Double that because you're going to Dynamax. So it's at 320. At 320 HP, it's got 135 attack, 130 defense. So if a Cinderace were to go ahead and hit this, it's probably going to survive. And then you get your weakness policy proc, and then you get to get a couple KOs, right? Uh, but yeah, let's move along. All right. So this one's interesting. Got the Rillaboom, got the Venusaur, the female Indeedee, and the Tapu Fini. Rillaboom. He hardly ever gets any speed investment. To be honest with you, I don't think he needs it. But Rillaboom gets Grassy Glide with Grassy Surge. So what is Grassy Surge? It, it produces the uh, Grassy Terrain. Grassy Glide turns into a priority move in Grassy Terrain. There you go. So 
at that point what's the point of speed right you're gonna attack first anyway because you have um, a priority move and you also the other thing is the reason you want to make sure that his speed is the lowest possible think of uh so you see indeedy and rillaboom are both in in here right so they're both in the same speed tier that means that whoever has the slowest speed gets to keep their terrain at the end of the uh the setup so like for instance let's say i lead uh ndidi hatterene right so ndidi hatterene and then my opponent leads with incineroar and uh, rillaboom right if my ndidi has 86 speed and his rillaboom is at 85 grassy terrain is going to stay in effect instead of the psychic terrain why because mine would get set up first then theirs venusaur on the other hand um Venusaur is a really good Pokemon because it, it can it can either Gigantamax or Sleep Powder. Like your opponent has to guess correctly on turn one or they might lose the battle. Why? Because if they Dynamax, right? If they Dynamax and you Sleep Powder turn one, you kind of just wasted their Dynamax. Yeah, let's say they prepare for Sleep Powder, but you Dynamax instead and then you do a super effective hit or you do um, the, the Vine Lash or whatever. They just took a lot of damage. <laughs> they just took a lot of damage. So um with venusaur he's he's kind of different uh in a sense that his base speed is 80 and you need to outspeed a lot of things because this thing is not surviving the hit now how does venusaur outspeed uh easy he has an ability called chlorophyll and it happens on their sun and guess what's popular right now sun teams so um how's venusaur going around um his, his 80 speed tier making sure that the sun is out as long as the sun is out that means his speed is so his speed is doubled in the sun as long as he has the ability chlorophyll so let's just say for instance right hypothetical you didn't put any investments in speed for venusaur he's at 80. you put the sun out there now he's at 60. there's only a number a handful of things that are outspeeding it at 160. now obviously you want to make sure that this thing's you know this thing is as fast as it could possibly be so that it doesn't get outsped by the things that this thing is weak to so that's one way to get around it indeedy Ndidi is the, almost the same case as Rillaboom in a sense that Ndidi doesn't really attack. So there's no need for Ndidi to like benefit from like a max speed Ndidi. Unless maybe you're going for like a Focus Sash, Follow Me um, type of thing where maybe there's going to be maybe maybe you max special attack, max speed, right? So that at some point it gets to go first. Um, and then you Focus Sash, right? So that it survives the hit, it gets to do an expanding force. And then on turn two, it gets to follow me and then, you know, get the one HP off uh going off but yeah indeed basically what you want to do with indeed is it's it's a support so it gets priority moves like like follow me and helping hand right so those are going to go off first anyway so why would you do any speed investment and that and the other thing is you want to make sure that your terrain goes off first now what happens if your rillaboom and your indeed are at the same speed the coin toss happens and if you lose then it looks like your terrain is not going to be out there right you want to have no ties you almost want to guarantee yourself that you're not going to tie in with your opponent tapu fini 85 speed now, Tabu Fini is also something different. Um, it's got 115 uh, defense and 130 special defense. That's a lot. Um, you might even want to do max HP, and it has something called Calm Mind. Basically, what it does is it increases its special attack and special defense by one stage. So, with stats like this, it's able to probably survive a hit and raise its stats in the next turn, right? So that's why you will probably see something like like uh, a type of Fini with like lef uh, leftovers or maybe a citrus berry so that you know once it got hit with a super effective move it, it just regains all that health right um and then on the next turn because it rose its special attack it's it's gonna attack you now um it doesn't really need to outspeed anything because of its natural bulk let's move it on to the next tier all right so 90s right 90s how many of you are 90s kids <laughs> um yeah anyways so Kyogre is in this list, right? Kyogre. So what is Kyogre? Man, this dude, his speed is 90. And if you take a look here and notice why I keep emphasizing on making sure that you're the speediest thing. So Kyogre, what he normally you know, runs is Water Spout and he wants to attack first. Let's say, for instance, you max out the speed of the Kyogre and then you give it an item that doubles its speed or maybe you have a setup that doubles the speed or things like that, right? That's that's just something to consider when it comes to to, uh, to building your Pokemon. Urshifu is out there to outspeed Moltres. It can survive hits on their Dynamax form uh, because of the 125 special defense and the 90 defense. But for the most part, again, you want to make sure that this thing is also fast in case this is your win condition. Lander is for the most part it's it's max attack, max speed. Um, if you look under the Pokalytics, um, and it's for the same reason. You want to be able to attack first. 
um, because that way it that avoids you taking a lot of damage and you getting you know maybe your your max airstream which boosts your speed anyway right just just something to keep in mind all right and then this is the elite dragapult and cinderace those were like yeah th those were up there like if you, you uh, i know it was really hard for anybody else to come to the club right but uh then we got the chrono tundra and now we're in season eight so that means that a few other pokemon got invited so now you got things like zapdos who are uh, base speed of 100 charizard um and then you got things like the calyrex and the sashian and the dragapult right which speed tier is almost at 150 so yeah um these are kind of like special uh pokemon per se so you want to make sure that the dragapult is faster you want to make sure that the sashian is faster things like that um whimsicott can attack but it's mainly there for support so whimsicott gets the ability prankster and even if this thing is max speed um as long as the other prankster user doesn't outspeed it it's going first and it's there to do things like tailwind helping hand um, you know other annoying stuff, but it can attack because it learns things like Moonblast and Hurricane. How would you build most of this Pokemon? You probably want to do max speed, max uh, max attack, or max speed, max special attack. Um, you want to inv maybe invest in some bulk just so that in case that's your Dynamax or that's your last Pokemon that that's gonna carry you to the game. If you're gonna battle something like this, you want to make sure that you either have a Pokemon that can uh, KO what the whatever threatens your speed, um, or you want to maybe survive a hit and, and get the KO on the next turn or something, right? And then we get to Regieleki. With Regieleki, even if you were to max speed this thing, right? And I think it gets like three something. I don't remember. Something dumb. A Calyrex max speed with a Choice Scarf will still outspeed this thing. Um, what I'm not now. I'm not saying that 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 basically triumphs this. No. What I'm saying is. You don't have to invest full speed on this thing, right? Because basically you want to see who's who's right below you in the speed tier, right? And if they were to max their speed, you need one more point, right? That's it. And if they were to add a choice scarf, uh, increases their speed by 50%. That's the only way they can outspeed you. And no matter how hard you try, unless you have a choice scarf yourself, you're, you're not going to outspeed it. Why are they in a weird tier list? Because they're really slow, right? So... The Amoongus is at 30 base speed, Torko is at 20. But here's the thing. Amoongus has Rage Powder and Spore, right? Among uh, Torko gets Eruption, and it also gets Heat Wave. And it also gets its own ability called Drought, which is Sunlight. So, in a Trick Room team, okay, Trick Room. So, in a Trick Room team, what remember, in Trick Room, what it does is it makes, makes the slower Pokemon go first all the way to the fastest Pokemon, right? Uh, Torkoal would be the fastest thing out there. And if it's hitting you with an eruption under the sun, it's probably going to KO a lot of things, right? Amoongus has Spore. Uh, as long as something isn't faster than Amoongus, or as long as something isn't slower, right, than Amoongus, he's putting you to sleep. Or if you're not a grass type, well, he's putting you to sleep, right? So... Why are they in this uh, weird speed tier? Well, so here's the thing. So Torkoal, I think I've seen a couple of support Torkoals where they, they learn Yawn and they do Eruption, right? Uh, Among Us usually Rage Powders um, or Spores. That That's mainly it, what you see on the VGC. They can do other things, um, but that's basically what you see. And Torkoal, really high defense, and then that special attack, if you were to increase it and give it a choice specs, oh, you're you're in for a really bad day so Torkoal does really bad if it's not on the trick room uh, i'm not saying it's a horrible pokemon to have but it, it succeeds better in trick room because it's, it's it, it wants to get as much damage as possible with an eruption um the amoongus it, it, either way you either like i said you get spore and you get um you get uh rage powder which is basically follow me um to follow me is a priority move well rage powder right rage powder is a follow, uh, a priority move and um it's there to take hits it's there to take hits i mean they're they're just weird i, I want to say they're weird uh in a way that unless they're trick room they aren't good but yet they are good even without trick room if that makes any sense <laughs> all right so speed items what do we have here we have a lagging tail we have a quick claw choice scarf which i keep mentioning um iron ball and full incense so lagging tail um basically what you'll see with lagging tail is you'll pro you'll probably have somebody with trick or switcheroo 
and what those moves do is they switch items with the target um, the reason you'll see that is because Grim Snarl and Whimsicott, they get something called Prankster, which is an ability. And it allows, it basically turns that move into a priority move. So it, it goes first, right? Unless they get faked out. Grim Snarl, Kyogre. They switch items. Okay. On the next turn, Kyogre, no matter what you do, Kyogre is going last. It doesn't matter if you Trick Room. It doesn't matter if you Speed Swap. Um, it, it's going last, right? Yeah, this could really screw some people up. Iron Ball does the same thing almost. Uh, it basically reduces your speed by half. It does other things like if, you, if a flying type Pokemon is holding one, now they can get hit by ground attacks, but we're not, again, that has nothing to do with speed. Iron Ball is another good thing. It's basically Thunder Wave, right? Because it slows you down by 50%. And then Choice Scarf. So Choice Scarf is interesting. Um, it is just like the title says, choice. So you have a choice of move that you decide to use. So like, let's say for instance, Kyogre, right? It's 90 base speed at max, I believe, is like close to 200, which is fine. And then you want to make sure you outspeed things. So you give it a choice scarf. Now your speed gets um, increased by 50%, right? The problem is that it's whatever move you decide to use that turn one, he can only use that one move unless you switch him out or you Dynamax. And if you Dynamax, once the Dynamax is over, you go back to choosing that one turn or that one move, right? Unless you switch him out or whatever. Claw is another thing basically you have, there's a 20 percent chance you'll go first uh it do i like it i don't like taking chance sometimes well well most of the time so i don't use it and it's not really a popular item in, in vgc but again it's an item that affects um speed all right and then these are basically moves that um control speed during battle now these aren't moves that um self-increased speed except for max airstream i mean these are moves more or less like okay i see what's on the field how can i outspeed right and it affects both your pokemon something like dragon dance and uh swords dance or something like that right that only affects you um these are moves that affect you and your partner because we're talking about doubles doubles is the standard that's what we're going to be focusing on so Things like Thunder Wave, Nozzle, and Glare, those are really good moves. Basically, what they do is they cause paralysis, and if you're paralyzed, your speed is automatically reduced in half. Yeah, you're there for a good time. Uh, there's a move called Quash. Um, Sableye, have you ever seen a Sableye? It probably has Prankster and the move Quash. Basically, what that does is it makes it so that whatever he targeted goes last. Doesn't matter if it's on the Trick Room, whatever. You're going dead last, and it works in Dynamax, po Dynamax Pokemon. Yeah, um, Icy Wind. Uh, it's a widespread move. It hits both uh, Pokemon on the field on your opponent's side of the field, and it lowers their um, their speed by um, one stage. So yeah, Sticky Web does the same thing, lowers their speed by one stage, but it's under uh, upon entering. So like you have to set the Sticky Web first, then the, uh, moving forward, the Pokemon coming in, it lowers their speed by fifty by by one stage. Um, Max Airstream. Uh, that does damage, and it also increases your speed and your um, ally speed by uh, by one stage. Trick Room, it's, it doesn't increase speed, it doesn't lower speed, but is a way to control speed, right? Um, because let's say, for instance, I don't know, you have a... And here again, speed tiers. You find out that a Metagross is faster than whatever you have, right? Because the way you can tell is, you had a Pokemon, base speed 100, and somehow this... Metagross outsped it and the, that was your fastest Pokemon. So what do you do? You do Trick Room. You know why you do Trick Room? You don't you probably don't have any of these other moves like Icy Wind. Oh, and I forgot about Tailwind. Um, Tailwind increases your it basically doubles your speed for five turns. Yes. So anyways, um, yeah, let's say you have none of these on your team, right? Let's say you have none of these. So what do you do? Your Trick Room. So now your slower Pokemon are going first and unless they Trick Room themselves or have something slower than you, um, or maybe they have priority moves. Um, they, they're not attacking first. And last but not least. So these are abilities that affect speed. So you have Swift Swim, Sand Rush, Slush Rush, and Chlorophyll. So all of these double your speed under certain weather. So Swift Swim is under rain. Um, Sand Rush is under sandstorm. Um, sl slush Rush is under hail. And Chlorophyll is under sunlight. So... Whenever you have a Pokemon with Swift Swim, you'll probably see something with uh, Drizzle. So like a Kyogre, a, um, a Politoed, or um, a Pelipper, right? That's usually partnered up with them so that on turn one, 
their speed is doubled. Sand Rush, you'll normally see somebody with a T-Tar. Slush Rush, you don't really see that. Uh, I'm not saying that Ice types are bad, but they're not popular. And then Chlorophyll, you have Kyogre, you have Torkoal, and you have a, um, a Ninetales. With Drought, they start off with that Pokemon. And for the most part, you have Venusaur. Um, Leafeon is another option, but you don't really, you rarely ever see that. But yeah, normally you'll see Venusaur and um, somebody with with Drought. And yeah, this is another form of speed control. Think about, think of it this way: you don't have Trick Room, right? You don't have um, Tailwind. You don't have Max Airstream. You don't have anything on your side of the field except weather. And you have a couple of Pokemon with Swift Swim, like Barrascuda or um, uh, the Kingdra, right? So let's say, hey, you know what? I don't, have, I, I don't have ways to lower my opponent's attack or uh, uh, speed, and I don't have ways to increase my speed except by weather. Boom, you set your weather, now you doubled your speed. Uh, speed control. But yeah, uh, that was a lot of information, and I try to cram everything all together. Um, I do tend to go off topic just a little bit, just 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 a little bit. Um, but I mean, it's all for you know, it's all for good intention. I want to make sure that you know you guys get all the information possible out there. But anyways, um, that's it for the speed tiers. Um, I might do a follow up video because I feel like I feel like I missed something. Um, go ahead and put it in the comment section below if I did. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe, uh, leave a like, and leave a comment on anything that you maybe want to see in the future. Or maybe I just bored you to death and um, you're about to wake up at the uh, at the outro. Either way, no matter what happens, as always, happy battles, Pokemon trainers.